Hello, and welcome to the Rockbridge Regional Library Storytime. My name is Miss Wendy, and I'm so glad that you could be here with me today. I have a very special story time today. We have a special guest, and it's really, really exciting. So let's get started. First, we always do our hello song. So here's how it goes, and we do some sign language in this song. So we'll say hello, and we'll salute. And then friends, you've got your two friends here and they give each other a hug. And then it's time to say hello. Okay, we're gonna do it twice. One, two, three. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello again. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Well, hello, all of my story time friends out there. So why, why don't we go ahead and before we even talk about this special guest, let's talk about the days of the week. What day is it? And how many days of the week are there? Let's have a look. So I've got my list here. And let's go over it. We've got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday. Now, how many are, is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good counting. Okay, well, let's sing our song. And let's see if we can figure out what day of the week it is today. So we have seven days, and here's how the song goes. Every week has seven days. See how many you can say. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. What is today? Well, what is today? Hmm. Well, it's story time day. So that means it's Wednesday, middle of the week. I like the middle of the week. So let's do our song again. Okay, seven fingers. Every week has seven days. See how many you can say. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. What is today? That's right, it's Storytime Wednesday. Yay, yay. Excellent. Well, before we get started, are you ready for a story? I am too. All right, I'm ready for a story. Are you ready for a story? Well, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. Hmm, what should we do next? Let's hop up and down. If you're ready for a story, hop up and down. If you're ready for a story, hop up and down. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, hop up and down. Yay! Okay, what's next? Let's touch our toes. Okay, where are our toes? Down there. Okay, if you're ready for a story, touch your toes. If you're ready for a story, touch your toes. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, touch your toes. Yay! Okay, last one. If you're ready for a story, sit real still. Can you freeze? Okay. If you're ready for a story, sit real still. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for 
short story, sit real still. I forgot to sit. <laughs> and now I'm going to freeze. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, well, before we get to our very special guest, let's do our breathing so that we are calm, we've got oxygen in our body, and we're ready to listen. Okay, so you're going to put your thumb and your first finger together and take a deep breath. And out. Middle finger and thumb. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Ring finger and thumb. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Pinky and thumb. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And thumbs up because you're excited about our special guest. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Now that always feels good and helps me get ready to listen to a book. Now I've got a special treat, so let's get to it. I have a special guest here today with us and I'm really excited to introduce her. Holly, come join me. Hi, Holly. Hello. Thank you for coming to Storytime with us today. Thank you for having me. Excellent. So, Holly, where do you go to school and how old are you? I go to school at Rockbridge County and I'm 14 years old. 14. So what grade does that put you in? I'm a freshman. A freshman. All right. So why are you here at Storytime with us today? Well, today I'm going to perform my piece in honor of Dr. Seuss's birthday. Um, Excellent. So she, Hallie, is part of a forensics club in school. So what is a forensics club? A forensics club is where you can, um, it's a speech club where you learn how to pronunciate and you learn how to um, have quick thinking. So do you debate? Um, that's one of the categories, yes ma'am. And so is storytelling one of the categories? Storytelling is one of the categories. Oh, yes. fabulous. So, Hallie is going to practice with us today. She has has a piece in mind that you might know and might recognize. Uh, Hallie, what are you going to perform for us today? Today, I'm going to perform Horton Hears a Who. Horton Hears a Who! <laughs> it's wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so without further ado, are you ready to recite Horton Hears? Oh, wait, you know what? Before that, tell us a little bit. Now, you're not going to recite the whole book. So what is it that you will be reciting? So today I'm going to be reciting the little parts of Horton Hears a Who that we all remember. Um, and I'll be acting them out today so that um, we can just have a little bit more visual on that. Wonderful, wonderful. This is exciting. Thank you for coming. Okay, Absolutely. everybody, are you ready for Horton Hears a Who recited by Hallie? Have you ever had moments in your life where you felt so small? Moments where you feel like your little voice just didn't matter. At some points, we all face these feelings of loneliness, but still we must seize the courage to be brave and to speak our minds during these moments. We have to let our little voices be heard because as we learn in Horton Hears a Who by Dr. Seuss, every voice counts. On the 15th of May in the jungle of Newell, Horton the elephant was splashing when he heard a small noise. Da 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 yee! That's funny, thought Horton. There's no one around. Da 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 yee! I'll help you, but who are you and where? He saw nothing there but a small speck of dust flowing through the air. I say I've never heard tell of a small speck of dust that is able to yell. Well, you know what I think? I think there must be someone on that speck of dust. I'll just have to save him, after all. A person's a person, no matter how small. So gently the elephant lifted its trunk through the air and carried the dust speck and placed it down safe on the clover. <laughs> Twas a sour kangaroo. <laughs> Why, that speck is as small as the head of a pan. 
a person on that <laughs> there has never been believe me i tell you sincerely my ears are quite keen and i can hear him quite clearly <laughs> well i think you are a fool in fact you are the biggest blind fool in the jungle of mule with that the kangaroo spun to the pool Kersplash! What terrible splashing! I can't let my very small persons be drowned. I've got to protect them. I'm bigger than they. So he picked up the clover and he hustled away. Through the high jungle treetops, the news quickly spread. He talks to a dust speck. He's out of his head. Just look at him walk with that speck on that flower. Horton walked. Should I put the speck down? If I do, these persons could come to great harm. I can't put it down and I won't. After all, a person's a person, no matter how small. The speck voice was talking. It was so faint that he could barely hear it. Speak up, please. My friend, you're a very fine friend. You've helped us dust people on this dust speck no end. You've saved our churches, our houses, and our grocery stores. You mean, you have buildings there too? Oh yes, we most certainly do. I know, I'm too small to be seen, but I'm mayor of a town that is friendly and clean. My town is called Whoville, for I am a Who, and we Whos are thankful and grateful to you. Don't worry, I won't put you down. You're safe now. But just as he spoke to the mayor of the speck, three big jungle monkeys came climbing up Horton's neck. And the wicker sham gang came shouting, Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ah! Well, whether or not this elephant is talking to who's who are not. There aren't any who's, and they don't have a mayor. Hmm. We're going to stop all of this nonsense. So there. They snatched Horton's clover and carried it off to a black bottom bird named Vlad Vladikov, a very mighty eagle, a very swift wing. And they said, would you kindly get rid of this thing? All that late afternoon and far into the night, that bird flapped its wings in fast flight while Horton chased after and begged, please don't harm my little folks who has much right to live as us bigger folks do. But the eagle kept flapping and behind his shoulder he called back, quit your yapping. I'm a bird, I'll fly the night through. I'll hide this tomorrow. We'll never find it. Ah, ha, 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 ha. At 6.56 the next morning, he did it. He let that little clover drop. Doosh. In a great patch of clovers, a hundred miles wide. Find that, but I think you'll fail. Ah, ha, ha, ha. And he left with the whip of his black bottomed tail. Whoosh. I'll find it. I'll find it or bust. I shall find my friends on the small speck of dust. Are you there? Clover, by clover, by clover. Horton found that the one he was searching for just wasn't around. And by noon, poor old Horton, more dead than alive, had picked, searched, piled up, 9,005. Then on through the afternoon, hour after hour, till at last Horton found them on the three millionth flower. My friends, do tell. Are you safe? Are you sound? Are you whole? Are you well? My friend, we've had much trouble, much more than our share. When that black bottom birdie let go and we dropped, we landed so hard that our clocks have all stopped. Horton, please, will you stick by his hoos while we're making repairs? Of course. I'll stick by you, small folks, through thick and through thin. <laughs> For almost two days, you have run wild and insisted on shouting with small persons who have never existed. Such carryongs in our peaceful jungle. <laughs> well, I'm here to state that I have had enough of your bellowing bungle. So with the help of those that I have engaged, you're going to be raped and you're going to be caged. And as for that speck of dust, ha! <laughs> That we should boil in a hot steaming kettle of basil nut oil. Boil it? Oh, that you can't do. It's all full of persons and they'll prove it to you. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, you've got to prove now that you're really there. 
Call a big meeting. Get everyone out. Make every who holler and make every who shout. If you don't, every who is going to end up in a hot steaming kettle of bezel nut stew. So down on the dust back, the mayor quickly called a big meeting in Whoville Town Square. And all of his people cried loudly, We are here! We are here! We are here! We are here! You kangaroo surely heard that very well. <laughs> all I heard was the sound of the breeze. I heard no small voices, and you didn't either. Grab him, cage the big dope, lasso his stomach with ten miles of rope, tie the knot so tight that he'll never shake loose, and then you dump that dumb speck in the basil nut juice. They grabbed him and started to haul him into his cage, but Horton managed to fight back and called to the mayor, Don't give up. <laughs> I believe in you all, and you will not have to die <laughs> if you make yourselves heard. So come on, <laughs> just try. So the mayor rushed from the east so down on the dust back, the mayor grabbed a tom-tom. He started to smack it, and all over Whoville, they whooped up a racket. And the mayor called up through the mad hullabaloo. Hey, Horton, how's this? Is our sound coming through? I can hear you just fine, but uh, the kangaroo's ears aren't quite as strong as mine. You've got to make noises in greater amounts. Uh, open your voice. Make sure everyone is working. Quick, look through your town. Through the town rushed the mayor from the east to the west, but... Everyone seemed to be doing his best. Everyone seemed to be yapping or yipping. Everyone seemed to be burping or chipping. Just about to give up in despair, the mayor discovered one shirker, quite hidden away, a very small shirker named Jojo was standing. Just standing, not making a sound, not a yip, not a chirp. So the mayor rushed inside and he grabbed the young twerp. He climbed with the lad up the Eiffel Tower and he exclaimed, this is your town's darkest hour, the time for all who's with blood that is red to come to the aid of our country. We have to make noises in greater amounts. Open your voice if every voice counts. So the lad cleared his throat <clears throat> and he shouted, <clears throat> Eop. Then finally, at last, from the speck on their clover, their voices were heard, and they rang out clear and clean, and the elephant smiled. Do you see what I mean? They've proved they're all persons, no matter how small, and their whole world was saved by the smallest of them all. How true. Yes, how true. From now on, do you know what I'm planning to do? From now on, I'm planning to protect them with you. From sun in the summer, from rain when it's fall, I'm gonna protect them, no matter how small. Yay. <laughs> that was wonderful. Thank you so much, Holly. That was amazing. Oh, thank you. It's such that's, a pleasure to be here. That's such a long recital. Wow. How long did it take you to memorize this? It took a couple months. Wow, so memorize means that she just says it all from her memory. So she's not reading a book or anything. She, no, <laughs> that is amazing. And how fun. That was just really wonderful. Oh, thank thank you, you so much for joining us for thank story so time. Really. And maybe you'll come back and read again for us. Absolutely. I should say so speak fun. again for us. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes. Bye. Bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that performance of Horton Hears a Who by Hallie. She did a great job and Friends is super, super cool. So until we see each other next time, don't forget, we've got to still wash our hands. So let's do tops and bottoms. Okay, we'll do it twice. One, two, three. Tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms. In between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together, now they're clean, squeaky clean. Again, tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together, now they're clean, squeaky clean. And now you can go have your snack because I know you've been waiting. <laughs> Okay, well, my friends, I will see you next Wednesday for more stories. And don't forget, 
on Thursdays at 10.30, it's baby and toddler story time. So that's more about songs and rhymes and cuddles. We'll be honest. In a couple books, of course. So until then, I will see you later, alligator, in a while, crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug. Blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, big baboon. Out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear. Wave goodbye, butterfly. Bye, bye.